In the last part, we created the application header. And on this part, we're going to design the application sidebar where you can see the options for navigating to feed, favorites, friends, and also the user settings. Now, on the last part, when we created the application header, it took quite some time and it did result in a lot of code. So the layout.csharp HTML file has already become really long. Now imagine adding the sidebar code in the same file as well. This is going to make the layout file even longer. However, before we create the sidebar, we are going to use partial views to simplify our code. A partial view in ASP.NET is a reusable component that renders a portion of a web application. It allows you to encapsulate and reuse HTML and server-side code across multiple views. This way, you're going to reduce the duplicated code and make your code more maintainable. The partial views are typically used for common UI elements like headers, footers, and sidebars. In our app, we are going to use the partial views to create other components as well, like for example, the transform view. And what that means is that you can then use the partial view to display the transform view card in different sections of the app without having to duplicate the same code. Let us go to Visual Studio. And in here, the first thing that we need to do is just go to the Solution Explorer. And then in here, we need to go to Views, Shared. I'm going to add a new folder, Add. I'm going to name this Navigation. You can name this Headers or whatever you want. It's just a name. Then right click in here. We are going to add two partial views. So go to view and the partial views per code convention start with an underscore, the underscore top bar dot C sharp HTML. Let us go and create another one. Right click, add a view, add. This is going to be underscore sidebar dot C sharp HTML. And now I'll just go to layout. I'm going to copy all the header code. Just going to actually cut it, cut it from here. And then just remove the existing code and paste it in here. You can see that all the code is in here. Now you need to load the top bar and sidebar from the layout.c sharp HTML. Let us first load the top bar. For that, you can use the partial tag. And then in this tag, you need to define the name and the name is basically the URL to the partial view. So in this case, the name is going to be, let's check the folder name. So navigation, because by default is going to check in the shared folder. So navigation, just navigation and then slash underscore top bar. And let us copy the same value, control C, paste it in here. And here, this is going to be navigation and then side bar. Let us save the changes. And now if we run the app, so let us check if the top bar code is being rendered. You can see in here that we get the top bar. Now the side bar, we're not going to only add what you see when you run the app, but we're going to also add this section that should be rendered whenever you click this icon. As you can see in here, nothing happens because we have not created the overlay that we want to be rendered whenever you click this button. So let us go back to Visual Studio. And then here go to sidebar. Let us remove all this code. Now in here, let us first create the main div. And then inside this div, we are going to have the sidebar that you would normally see on a normal screen. But if you are in a smaller screen, you need to also create another div, which is a div that is going to be rendered. I'm going to set an ID to this div, which is going to be site sidebar overlay, sidebar underscore overlay. And to this div, I'm going to give a class. This is going to be the class. 
and this class basically just sets the position it does set the width and also the height of the screen and if you want you can also optionally set how you want to render or how you want to toggle this div and as you can see in here the target is set to be side sidebar and if you just go to the top bar and search for the same value you can see that this div so this one is going to be rendered whenever users click this button let's go back to sidebar and now in this div we're going to add all the code but before we write any code we need to first define that this div is going to be the sidebar div so for that id site sidebar then here i'm going to also set some tailwind classes the classes that you can see in here will fix the element at the top left it will ensure that it appears above the other elements it hides the overflow adds top padding applies a smooth transition and also adjusts the width and position for different screen sizes now inside this div we are going to have we set two divs one is for the sidebar let's say sidebar inner and the other one is for the overlay now for the sidebar inner i'm just going to add some other classes and as you can see i'm just uh, copy pasting some classes because css is not the focus of this course but since we are writing some css of course we need to mention like at least like with a couple of sentences what all these classes are all about and we have to do like all the designs because we do need to interact with the controllers in the upcoming parts and all the other application components the classes here add padding set a white background on smaller screens applies a small shadow adjusts the width for different screen sizes sets the height to fill most of the viewport positions it relatively with a high z index adds a right border on smaller screens and sets a dark background and border color in dark mode so in case we want to support dark mode this is what we need to add in here like everything dark column is related to the dark mode now inside here i'm going to add another div and to this div i'm going to add some padding to the right let's say class and then padding right for units then i'm going to use the data dot simple bar and the data simple bar attribute enables custom scroll bar styling and behavior inside this div i'm going to add a nav tag which is going to have an id of side then inside this nav tag i'm going to have three unordered list items because as you could see we have the feed favorites and friends and let us start with the first one Control k d to format the code before we write any code the first list item is going to be basically just an a tag and this is going to have an image which is going to be the icon of this menu item the image is going to be source and then we're going to have images icons and this is going to be the home let us set a class of w six so this is going to set the width to just six units and then down here we need to have span this is going to be feed now let us create another list item so control c paste it in here this is now going to be for the favorites so for that i'm going to use the page image i'm going to use the same width the title now is going to be favorites let's copy this one more time paste it down here the image is going to be let's say group two same width the name is going to be brands this is all for the navigation bar but you can see that after the first one so we have a navigation we're going to have another one and this navigation is going to be used for the pages so after the first nav let's just create another nav that just set an id same id is going to be side and let us add some custom classes which are related to the font to the text and also to some padding and margin then inside here we are going to have 
a div and this div is just going to have the title pages because in here you can see that we have all the items here on the left and then we have pages title and then settings so to this div i'm just going to set some classes which are related to some padding and also text and then i'm going to have another div which is going to have the value pages and here i'm just going to set that the text is going to be black here text black and that's it after this div we are going to have an unordered list another unordered list which is going to have a margin top just add some custom classes here let's add list item and then here an a tag in the previous tags what we did is that we used images but in this tag we're going to use an icon and that is just an svg so if you want you can navigate to the same page i showed you on the last part copy whatever svg you want to use paste it in here then at the end add a span and set the value to settings and save the changes now let us save all the changes and run the app so we can see that the app ran successfully we have in here the feed favorites friends and also settings and if I just zoom in, you're going to see that the menu is hidden. But if you click this icon, the menu is back here. So this is all for this part. On the next one, we are going to design the feed page.